Thank you so much, Sherry Lynn. Um, so I'm Sarah Cordy. I am one of the lecturers uh, in midwifery at University of Central Lancashire. And I am new to the team. I'm relatively new to the, the lecturing team and I've come straight out of practice. Um, and I feel really passionately about this type of curriculum because I was one of the first students in the first cohort to take up this type of curriculum um, as a student midwife. And I, I really, I've known nothing different in terms of midwifery training, um, but I can see really clearly the impact for learners and midwives and how student midwives becoming midwives and the impact on practice. So when I did midwifery training, it was a, a massive paradigm shift for me because I'd only ever known the type of learning that was previous to midwifery that was very traditional lecture based, um, the lecturer as the instructor as the instructor providing information that they felt was appropriate and um, so it was a huge paradigm shift for me to take on this new type of learning um, but I think it was it was really effectively done and one of the crucial elements of it and this obviously moves into practice is the fact that you have to cultivate really effective working relationships which is to me more than just team working it's about really growing and, and building relationships and how important that is in practice it begins in the training so in your small groups um, of case-based learning within the, the the group that you're working you have to identify each other's strengths and work to them um, and everybody has to take on different roles and so that really starts um, very early on in the training um, and as Sherilyn mentioned the creativity and innovation that you have to come up with so every week providing something new and I think that again this as a student was new to me you know you're not just taking this information in and writing it down to to pass an exam you're not doing that you're having to really explore the information around it and present it to the rest of your group and the rest of your cohort Sorry, excuse me, my screen's gone off. Is that happened to anyone else? Um, and the responsibility that you feel as a student to provide that information is, is important to the way in which you, you approach disseminating that information. So you have to be creative about it. So my experience of a student, when uh, you're providing that information, you have to really develop your critical thinking skills um, as Cheryl mentioned, you, you are looking at the research, looking at the evidence, and you have to think critically and, and develop your own critiquing skills. And that then moves into practice again because you're looking at guidelines. So it instills that value of lifelong learning and that it's not just about the university experience and passing your degree. It's about the importance of keeping up to date with your knowledge and, and learning throughout the rest of your career. Um, the way that that yeah, you start out being brand new to this type of learning but your self-efficacy develops and in relation to salutogenic approach it's really important because it develops your your compre comprehensibility and your manageability and your meaningfulness all of that really helps with that approach to learning and disposition as it goes into practice so as I left practice and then moved in, uh, sorry, left uh, education as a student and then moving into practice, um, the things that I really noticed that CBL had helped with were leadership. And we see this in, in our newly qualified midwives at the minute. They're coming into practice already skilled in these lead, leadership and, and um, leadership qualities and the same with autonomy. They know how to gather the information and make decisions autonomously and um, being able to work in a multidisciplinary way. So having the, that relationship building that they've, they've already, uh, the skills they've already developed, they're able to use that and apply it to the team that they're working with, the wider team, the obstetric team, and um, other elements of the care that they've got to provide for women. Um, it helps to be able to support students straight away. And with the new standards, obviously that's a really crucial element. So being able to support students right from being a newly qualified midwife, because you've supported the rest of your group through their training, being able to provide family-centered care and that continuity approach that obviously is crucial coming into um, the implementation of continuity of care. And um, we've, as a student, you've followed a case through and you've already built that relationship 
and and that translates really well into practice as the, you've developed these leadership and autonomy skills you're able to critique the guidelines that you're working within and whilst obviously maintaining your professional standards you're able to question things and think well why are we doing it in a certain way is can can we do things differently and what does the evidence say about this um, and I think that that we are seeing that that transformation of maternity services now um, so then moving from practice into it um, being an educator myself having that experience in CBL um, and then in practice and seeing that I know that it's an effective way of learning and an effective way of practicing um, I, I know that the educator is not the disseminator of information they're not the person who chooses what's important actually the student needs to be in control of their own learning and the educator is the facilitator of that so directing to resources rather than just providing the information is so valuable because then the student has to go and find the resources themselves learn it and and be able to then provide it to their colleagues um, human factors i think this is something that we are we it's important in practice but also when you're providing um education um to the students you need to recognize the interplay of relationships and how that can impact on both learning and practice and um, so I think case-based learning really helps you to develop those skills too. Providing that sense of coherence so if you think about it in relation to everything in life and it goes back to salutogenic approach in every element of it is it comprehensible you know yes it is do we understand it is it manageable to the students yes absolutely it is and does it provide them with meaning are they taking ownership of their own learning absolutely absolutely and as an educator you see the student developing and growing and and developing confidence um, and, and that's really inspiring both um, you know as an educator and, and just as a human as a, as a, as a person um, the sharing information you know we love to kind of see what the, like Sherilyn mentioned that the information that students find for us is amazing you know that the resources that they got we can direct them on and then the students can find incredible pieces of information for us to learn for what it's that cycle of learning between each other and that again falls in with the equity so reducing that hierarchy it's not that one person knows more than the other it's about what can we learn together and how can this approach help us to transform maternity services um, I think in obviously it's contextual and COVID has been really um transformative in in terms of remote learning but our curriculum fits really really well with this type of um learning so because the students were not already just receiving lectures the type of learning that they're doing fits brilliantly with developing their digital skills and as the maternity services go forward we know that it needs that we're moving into more of a digital world so the type of learning that case-based learning provides them um, it, it just fits really well with that um, so I think that throughout the whole thing you can see that starting right from day one being a midwife is not just about being with a mid, with a woman in in labor or birth or in pregnancy it's a, it starts with our students and so we're being midwives to our students and we're being midwives to each other as educators and it, it just flows all the way through right from day one um, we like to think of it like this so I know Cheryl Lynn's mentioned in, it's all interwoven together and it absolutely is if we think of, of that those relationships and the salutogenic approach as the gold thread and we just interweave it all the way through that right from day one to being with a woman at the end of their journey um, it develops your skills on a personal level um, I know it definitely helps with knowing that you can have a salutogenic approach to everything helps with personal relationships and coping and manageability particularly during covid when everything seems upside down if you can fall back on that salutogenic approach and, and think about how can i make, how can i develop my sense of coherence here really does help um, it's about ongoing personal development so constant that lifelong learning um, and 
staying within our professional ethical and legal responsibilities um, I think that the students develop that again right from the start so they can see the NMC, the NMC code is, is woven right the way through it and every single case um, the students have to think about that and they know that their responsibility to provide information to each other as, as learners um, is almost kind of representative of that. So yeah, that's my, and this, these are some of our resources that um, will support the students and other people who are interested in our type of learning it might help to help understand it. Um, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video from the Maternity and Midwifery Forum. For more expert opinion and analysis, hit the button below to subscribe.